just it just enter it just indulge me then billy if if you could what what uh can you give me an idea that you think would make the show better oh sure well you know the, <laughs> the most obvious thing is that you have to put away that voice modulator uh-huh i don't yeah. speak through a voice modulator billy you, there's no way you're you're not using one it's there's I, there's no way I am using one. I don't use one. This is my voice. Huh. Well, again, we could bat that forth all all night, but I choose not to. Um, here's what else you got to do. You have to step away from the food talk. The what? The food talk. Food talk. Yeah, yeah. You're always talking about about either pizza or candy. Uh huh. And it, it, it's just too much. And you know what you got to do? What's that? You got to do more impressions. More impressions. Yeah, I've heard you do some some pretty decent ones. Oh, well, that's nice of you to say. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, here, here's what I think you should do. Okay. Like, I think it would be hilarious if you, I don't know, if you did like, uh, like what what would what would it sound like if if Joe Namath was reviewing uh, the Beach Boys Pet Sounds album. Hmm. Jo so Joe Namath. Yes. Review reviewing pet sounds. Yeah. Like I, I I'm with you in a record store, mm -hmm. and you're Joe Namath, and I'm uh, you know we're 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 flipping through the the bees, and we get to the Beach Boys, and uh, I find pet sounds, and I go, you know, I've never heard this, Joe. What do you okay. What do you know about this? So what would Joe Namath say back? Yeah. All right, let me think. Wait, you've never heard Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys? No. You wouldn't believe how good this album is. It's Brian Wilson's masterpiece. He did this album uh, pretty much when the rest of the band was on tour with a lot of session musicians. And uh, it has songs like You Still Believe in Me and uh, Sloop John B. It's uh, it's really uh, ahead of its time in terms of the orchestration and the lyrical content. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> you had me peeing in my khakis. No. Oh my god! I was stamping my super puffy white sneakers on the floor the entire time so hard that my half socks almost flew off. Your half socks? Yeah. Okay, I didn't need to know that detail. That oh you were God. wearing half socks. Oh, yeah, so you can see my ankles. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst thing I've ever heard. What, do you think it makes my uh, my legs look like toddler legs, even though I'm a full-grown adult? Yeah, you're, hey. you're right, Nick. What? You're in showbiz sometimes, right? That's an interesting way of putting it, but I'll say yes to that. Can you verify this rumor mm -hmm. that, that Bernie Sanders is the older brother of Colonel Sanders? Uh, I've that, been hearing I'm, it a lot I'm, recently. I'm, it's <laughs> where are you hearing that? I feel like I heard it online. Uh huh. And then I read it somewhere. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. I, yeah. I don't think that tracks. That Bernie Sanders would be the older brother. Okay. What What if he was the next person in those KFC commercials, though? Well, see, that leads to my next thing. Yeah. I think you should be the next Colonel Sanders. Oh, that's. I do. I think you'd be great. Well, I mean, that's sweet of you to say, but nobody knows who I am. Well, you know, my cousin Todd is the East Newbridge District Manager for KFC. Okay. And I can see if he can get you a screen test. A screen test? Yeah. For a KFC thing. I'll bet you could do a great Colonel Sanders. Please do it now. A Colonel Sanders? What, what yeah, would please. that be? What what's Colonel saying? Oh boy, we got our ch uh, chicken, everybody, right? You're playing a you're playing a record. Gather around and get some chicken. Are you playing a record? No, I'm not. Oh my God, sounds just like him. See, that's my favorite thing about about the best show. Yeah, what's that? Your impressions. Oh, that's nice of you to say. You're really good. Uh huh. Well, thank you. Can, can I get you to do another one? Uh, maybe. Please. Okay, okay, what do you, what? Let me think. How about... Oh, I know you do Joe Namath 
a lot. That's really good. Um, oh, how about um, how about Bird Noir mm-hmm. doing okay. like short capsule reviews of all the Mud Honey records? Bert Lahr, you mean the, the cowardly lion from yes. The Wizard of Oz? Yes. Please. Do, doing capsule reviews of Mud Honey records? Yeah. Okay, let me see what that would be. Okay, everybody, put them up, put them up. I want the first single was called Touch Me, I'm Sick, and on the back, on the B-side, it was Sweet Young Thing Ain't Sweet No More, see? And uh, it was really uh, maybe the beginning of grunge in a lot of ways, people would say. And then uh, Super Fuzz Big Muff was the first EP. A big song on that was uh, In and Out of Grace. Big one, big one. And uh, first album, uh, <laughs> I, that's... Then they did Everybody, Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge came out. And, uh, are you happy? That... Keep going, please. <laughs> yeah. well, then, please, uh, please, get, please at least get to tomorrow hit no, today. Tomorrow. And then uh, they did uh, tomorrow. What, what's after every you good forgot, I think you forgot piece of cake. Then they did piece of cake. It was kind of like a gr- return. And they recorded in a small studio and uh, had a had a return to form kind of a Billy Childish influence on it. Uh, you see, you put them up, right? And then uh, what was after that one? Well, there's tomorrow hit today. That's all. That's all I remember. Oh, my brother the cow. Yeah. And then they did signed to Warner Brothers, and that's when uh, Piece of Cake was on Warner Brothers. They did Every Good Boy Deserves Fudge as the last Sub Pop record until they signed a rep- reprise, and then that came out and uh, didn't go so well. And they did My Brother the Cow, and then Tomorrow Hit Today, and then they ended up uh, taking a little hiatus at Monkey Wrench, and then uh, then went back to Sub Pop. I could listen to you do this all night. Could you do it for all the Chemical People no, records, too? I'm not going to do it for all the Chemical People records. Oh, oh okay. stop. Oh. Namaste. You know, you do fun impressions. Well, I, I try sometimes. Oh, come on. It's my favorite part of the show. Oh, well, that's nice of you to say. I love it. All my buddies love it, too. It's their favorite part. Oh, okay. Uh, that's that's. I appreciate hearing that, but I... Please do one. Of? Please. What? What? An impression of what? Well, let me think. Um, how about... Uh, oh, what about that, that, um, that Bella Lugosi scene in the movie Ed Wood? I bet you, you would do that great. Oh, I mean, other people... Please. I've heard people... It's one of my favorite movies. See, I knew it. I could feel it. Okay, so you want me to do that? Please, yeah. Just a part of it. Okay, I mean, I don't really... Oh, like a Bela Lugosi impression. Huh. I bet you can do it really well. Mm-hmm. What would it be? It would be like... Like... Like 20 years ago. Like that part of the thing where he's like... Yes, yes, that's it. My dear Professor Strauski, that that scene? That's it, yes, yes. Twenty years ago, I was banned from my homeland. Hunted, despised, living like an animal. The jungle is my home. And I shall show the world that I can be its master. You're playing the movie. No, I'm not. That was you are. That was no. That was not very good. Oh my God, you're so good. Would you do one more thing for me, please? What? Same same thing, Mm -hmm. but Bela Lugosi doing capsule reviews of the Monkees albums, please. (laughs) Bela Lugosi. Okay, let me see what this would be. Just the first three. The first Monkees album is called. The Monkeys, self-titled. It is the peak of Don Kirshner's iron grip on the Monkeys. Mike Nesmith had one song, Papa Jean's Blues, and early pressings misspelled Jean's. The second album, More of the Monkeys, continued Kirshner's reign. This album featured 
I'm a believer. The third monkey's album was headquarters, and the monkeys were playing all the instruments. Stop, please! It's too scary. <laughs> scary? Yeah. Oh my god. <sighs> Oh my god, that was frightening. How was that fright? It was like the wolf, the wolf man was here with me. Well, I, I gotta say, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty angry uh, right now. Oh no. Did you run out of chain pizza restaurants to rail against? Uh huh. Okay, that's. I'm just cool. asking. Uh, no, no, I didn't run out of chain. Why is that even a thing? That's not all I do. It seems like it. I mean, it's a major part. I, I would think if, if there was like a, a, a pizza, yeah, I've, 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 I've got pizza in the brain, I guess, because I'm talking to you, but uh -huh. like a pizza, like a pie chart, pizza pie chart, I would say making fun of pizza as end or food would be like 99% of that pizza pie mm -hmm, chart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I disagree with that. Um, All right. I do think that Papa John's pizza, it looks, okay, I'm not even going to. Never mind. I don't do that all the... Um, well, look. So you went for it. I, I, you, you, look. You have schnatter on the brain. I you am, have schnatter on your bean. I have schnatter. So what do they call a brain? It's, not, it's, a bean, it's a noodle. You have schnatter on your noodle. That's a great saying. Schnatter on your noodle. Papa uh, John's okay. what, would, what would it be like if, if Morrissey had a song called Schnatter on my noodle? Could you do it, please? What would that be like? Yes. He'd like, be, he'd I've go, got schnatter. Yeah, he'd go, he'd go, well, something like, like he would be singing it. He'd be asking someone for advice. He'd be like, oh, headmaster, headmaster, please. I need some help. I got schnatter on the noodle. Oh, headmaster, what should I do? I've got schnatter on the noodle. <laughs> and <laughs> Would you put Mike on for a second? Mike, uh, put Mike on, really? No. I gotta ask him something. Seriously? Yes, yes, yes. Mike? Oh, headmaster. See, it's not stuck in my head. It's very catchy. What What do you want to ask Mike? Mike? Yes. Level with me. He played a record, didn't he? No, he didn't. Oh, my God. I'm looking at him right now. There's no, there's no record that he just happened to have called Schnatter on my noodle. I don't see any record no, here. No, there's no record. Oh, oh, my God. I tell you, man, every time I think that you're a complete sh slub idiot, mm -hmm. you, you surprise me and, and you, sh you prove yourself to be a, a, a weird genius. Well, that, uh, that's a sweet thing for you to say. I... Well, to you I say namaste. Well, thank you, Darren. I the genius in me recognizes the genius in you. Yeah. Will Hollywood ever get rock and roll wrong? <laughs> they've got a they've got a pretty perfect batting average. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of music, mm -hmm. congratulations to you. What? Congrat? What do you mean, congratulations? Well, I heard that Kurt Vile is recording Schnatter on my noodle for his next album. Oh, that's the the. That's the thing we were doing last week. Yeah, I, you you wrote a song, and I guess he's covering it. He's covering the Smiths version of that we came up with with John Schnatter as Papa John. Yes. And there was something about Schnatter on my that I had Papa John on the brain, and we said Schnatter on my noodle. Yeah. How do you think it'll sound when Kurt does it? Yeah, Schnatter on my. Noodle, yeah. <laughs> Sounds just like him. Is he playing a record, Mike? Does he? Does did he get an advance of this song? No, he didn't. Okay, I did not. He did okay. not. I did not. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So, hey, is it true that like three of the Buckinghams were involved in a chainsaw murder? Uh, the band that did kind of a drag. Yes. I don't think. I don't think that's true. I've never heard that. I think it is true, and I think they also did the the soundtrack to um, to um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That the the Buckinghams did the soundtrack. 
I think so. To the yes. original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They did. Hey, and speaking of, of soundtracks. Yeah. I saw Sully last night. Oh, really? How was it? It was pretty good. He, he, he nails the mustache, that's for sure. The, the the movie about the guy who landed the plane on the Hudson, Sully. Sully. Exactly. Sully yeah. Sullenberger. Yeah. Clint Eastwood did, uh, he, he wrote, uh, I think, a title song for the, for the film. I was surprised to see that. I did not know that. Yeah. And um, I, my big disappointment. What's that? Was that it didn't touch at all on the Sullenators. On the what? The Sullenators, Sully's band, kind of, kind of a doom, doom metal band, a little bit of dark thrash in there too. With Sully. Oh yeah, yeah. The pilot. Yes. Well, he's in one of those bands. Uh, he leads a band. The Sullenators. Yeah, you Sulla dummy. Uh, you know what? I you if... Sulla, you Sulla dummy. Wait, no, it's I Sulla. Yeah. What? I definitely am a Salola dummy. I did not you know are. about Say it again. this. Say it as fast as you can. I am definitely not a Salola dummy. Can you do it? Can you can you do? Can you do it as? Oh man, you're so good at those impersonations. How about um? Oh my God, what about? Could you do Mickey Dolan's doing it? Meh, meh, Salola dummy. Or no, he'd probably go like, you dirty rat, you call me a solid dummy, right? You you dirty rat. Yeah, do it Jay, like you call holds, me a solid dummy. Do, that's perfect, but do it do it more like someone's holding you back while you do it. No, yeah, see, you solid dummy. Yeah. Like that? Hey, can you put Mike on? Mike? AP Mike? Yes. You seriously want to talk to AP Mike? I do, yeah, yeah. Mike? This caller wants to talk. I didn't even get this guy's name. Oh, it's Rick from Newbridge. Rick from Newbridge. Okay. Mike's here. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good. When he was, when he was doing that Mickey Dolan's thing, yeah. he was playing an episode of The Monkees, wasn't he? Uh, maybe if you uh, ask him to do it again. I'm in the studio now. Okay, do it again. Yeah, see, it's all a dummy. See, that's not even very good. Oh, it sounds just like it. Does he have it on his phone or something? No, I actually saw his lips moving that time. Oh my God, I tip my I, I tip my wool cap to you. You know, it was it was fifty years ago yesterday that the that the monkeys premiered. Yes, it happened then, and fifty years later, here we are. Oh wow, that's really uh. Julia Lidblower you got going there. You learn something new every day, Billy. We're teaching B. each other. I guess I guess that's how life works sometimes. You sometimes you're the teacher and sometimes you're the student. Sounds like someone's been watching some kung fu. Well, I've been listening to a lot of the police actually. Oh. What album? Synchronicity. Ooh, Miss Credenko. That's the best song on that record. Followed by Oh My God. <laughs> Mm -hmm. There's other songs on that record too, I think. I think there are a few other songs on it. Yes, might be. Uh huh. It might... You know, one of the few albums that was a number one album where all the uh, players wore shorts during the recording of it. I didn't know that. Yep. Hey, let's go back to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Sure. You know, I love when you do those cool impressions. Okay. Well, it's thank coming you. up on my birthday. Mm hmm. And the best possible birthday present would be you doing Joe Namath inducting Yes. Please. You want me to do an impression of if Joe Namath. Yes. Football legend Joe Namath. Yes. Was inducting Yes into the yes, Rock and Roll please. Hall of Fame. All of them. Okay, let's see. we we'll probably go something like this. I'll do this. I'll try. Ladies and gentlemen, it's... A thrill. When I was on my Super Bowl run, I would listen to Time in a Word. And Starship Trooper was one of the favorite songs I would play before each game. 
with the football jets. Let's all have a huge hand and welcome the band that brought us close to the edge. <laughs> Tales from topographic oceans. Going for the one. Drama. The Big Generator. Union. Tormato. Say Tormato again, please. Tormato. <laughs> and let's have a hand for John Anderson, Trevor Rabin, <laughs> Steve Howe, Alan White, Jeff Downs, Trevor, oh, Trevor Horn, Tony Kay, Rick Wakeman, Let me think who else. Chris Squire. And, of course, this wouldn't be, this band would not be here. They are one soldier down. <laughs> the great, Chris, the fish, the great Chris Squire passed away earlier this year and could not be in attendance, obviously. So we send out our loving wishes to his family. Let's, let's all have a huge hand for the fish. I loved it. Thank you for doing that. Oh, you, okay. Well, happy birthday, Bill. Oh, so Halloween? Yeah, how about you? Are you, gonna you know what I'm going to go with? What's that? I'll probably go with Paul Stanley again. That's kind of my go-to. Okay. That's your... yeah, I, I, I like wearing the corset, and I, mm -hmm. I, li I like the boots and the makeup. It's just fun. It's like a like a cathartic sort of thing to, to be involved with. Mm -hmm. I like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, speaking of, 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 uh, of, of Paul Stanley. Yeah. The lover. Yes. You're only giving a little bit tonight, but my favorite part of the best show yeah. is when you do those impressions. Oh, I don't. I love it. I Please. I, I would I would kill. It would be the best Halloween present ever. Uh -huh. If you would do Paul Stanley. Um, let's see. What's a, what's a good situation? What, how about Paul Stanley... Talking about the merits of the ninety one ninety two Chicago Bulls. Oh, I don't. Please. What is it, Paul Stanley, in an interview? Pa Paul Stanley, yeah, like okay. doing doing his thing where, where it's it sounds like he's he's reading a script. Okay. Paul Stanley. Okay, this I don't. Cause he talks like this. Yes, Paul yeah. Stanley. So he would say, the, the 1991-92 Chicago Bulls were really one of the best teams in the history of the NBA at that point. Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen had their tandem working in perfect accord, and Horace Grant's rebounding had reached an all-time high. And now, with, all, with John Paxson knocking down threes, they were able to spread the offense more effectively. Is that what? Is that it? He hung up. I had no, I'm oh, here. Oh. I just can't believe how real that was. You're making fun of me now. No, I'm not. No, Mike, now you're making fun of me. Did he have an audio book going? No, Mike. Mike. I, I didn't have an audio book of Paul okay. Stanley talking about the Chicago Bulls. There is one though, right? I do think he has one. It's called, uh, it's called Let's, uh, it, 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 it would be called Let's Get Ready to Play Some Basketball. I think that's it, yeah. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Right? It's <laughs> yes. just like. <laughs> I like that, yes. <laughs> like, he would be just like, I'm here in Chicago! You guys got the bulls! Michael Jordan! And then if he went to the next city, he'd be like, You know, over in Chicago, they think they're great with the Bulls! Boo! He would act like he never was in favor of them <laughs> one night earlier. That's true. That's good. I'm yeah, glad you and Elvis um, Costello are cool again. We are, yeah. But you know, it's super late here. And uh, But I was listening to the show, and you know, I was thinking about... 
all the craziness going back on, you know, back in the States and just feeling really depressed about the, the, the turn things have, have taken at home, you know, it's sheer madness and um, I don't even know what to say about it, but I don't want to get too political here, you know, and, and we're, you know, we're just really down, the whole band's down here, but, um, you know, what would make me happy. What's that? Well, you're so good with those impressions that you do. Oh, oh. I, I love it. About that, the Joe Namath one. What, you could do the phone book as Joe Namath, and I, I'd be on the floor laughing. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, I'd, I'd love to hear you do one, do one for me now. Could you please? I'll try. I'll, I'll try. Please. I don't know. Well, what would you want to hear? Let me think. Um... Oh, well, you know, we were just talking about Elvis Costello. What about what about Elvis Costello talking about the 1994 New York Knicks? Huh. The ne Elvis Costello talking about yeah. the 1994 New York Knicks. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think how Elvis Costello talks. It's like it would be just like let me think. The New York Knicks, Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Anthony Mason, the Oakman, Charles Oakley. Were they good? They were the best. Oh, this is the best. Hey, Tom. <laughs> yeah? We've been doing guitar overdubs all day. I haven't had a chance to play at all today. I'd love to kind of just like jam along with you. Is that okay? Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay. As the New York Knicks made their run into the playoffs, mm -hmm. it really mm -hmm. seemed like they would mm -hmm. repeat the glory days of 1973. That Derek Harper was at in mid-season as point guard when Doug Rivers went down with a season-ending injury. I remember seeing a game when a fan was saying, Hey, we got the... You Knicks think you're gonna win this now? And Patrick Ewing was like, Hey, we're gonna win this. In the playoffs, they went. I put back Duncan game seven. Oh, no. What? Oh no, Elvis must have been listening to the best show. Yeah. Oh. His ears and eyes are everywhere, I swear. He knows exactly what's going on at all times. Yeah. Oh no. He's walking into the studio. He's got those new Google laser shades. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know what those are. He, he's engaged the lasers. He's staring right at me. Oh. Elvis, no! Bobby? Bobby! No! Oh no! Bobby? Are you there? Oh, okay. Sounds like he shifted settings on them. I hope that Parker can protect you. Bobby? Oh, oh weird. I'm. I'm okay. Nothing happened. Oh, that's good. Do you think the parka did it? Ah, Maybe the Google laser shades sure don't work, do they? Well, well. Bobby. Oh, okay, there he goes. Well, look, I'm I'm not as caught up on how he got wavy gravy into the house as that. What I think you're saying is that the Brady children were on acid in this episode. Oh yeah. Everybody got dosed. The kids were flipping on doses. Uh huh. But then things turned really ugly, Tom. Uh huh. How, how so? Well, the vibe just turns black, and this really trippy Iron Butterfly instrumental starts playing. Yeah. And the kids start screaming. And then Jan says that she sees Peter melting in front of her. And then he gets super scared, and he stabs Wavy Gravy. 
And then Peter strips his own clothes off, and he jumps off the carport roof. Uh-huh. And as he's jumping, as he's falling, he yells, that drum solo sounds so freaking far out, I want to take it with me. Which, of course, was later used uh, in a Raymond Pettibon drawing that showed up on Double Nickels on the Dime. Okay. And at this point, uh huh. Mike and Carol, they're locked in this simmering, super deep, really dark back and forth about their marriage. He goes, I know that you wish your husband was still alive. And then she, Carol says that Mike moans his widow's name every time they make love every night. Uh -huh. And then they start screaming at each other. Yeah. And it comes out that Carol and Alice might have something going on. What? Really weird, right? And that leads Sam the Butcher to go into this crazy violent rage yeah and then he picks up this meat cleaver and he starts waving it around over his head and by this point the kids are just terrified and then joe namath comes over and he tries to get the cleaver away from sam and tom sam ends up cutting joe's hand off and then he starts eating it it's sick, and then everyone starts joining in, and they're all eating Joe Namath alive. Can you even imagine his screams, Tom? Can, can you even begin to, like, I don't know, imitate what he would sound like in such a situation? What Joe Namath would sound like getting eaten alive? Yes. There's no way you could even come close to imitating Help. It. Help. I believe I'm being eaten alive. My hand was chopped off by Sam the Butcher. That was my th that was my football hand. Now I'm being eaten alive by the by this family. Help! Can you put Mike on for a second? What What do you? I, I'll call out to him. Or I gotta call. ask him something. I'll I'll ask him. I'll relay it. Can you ask Mike if you Tom were just now playing a, a Joe Namath horror record? Um. Mike, was I playing a Joe Namath horror record? No, I wasn't. Mike said no. Okay, well, that answers that question. I gotta say, that was a tremendous impersonation of a pro quarterback in agony. Well, why, why thank you. Do you do any other quarterbacks in agony? Um, I don't know if I have any other quarterbacks in agony. Um, okay. maybe, um, I guess I could think of what, like, uh... Oh, are there any music people? In agony, like any music people in agony, like, like uh, do, can you do? Oh man, can you do Van Morrison getting eaten alive? Van Morrison getting eaten alive would, what would that be like? He'd be like, oh no, I don't know, right? Like, yes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Eat me alive. Right? That's perfect, man. I don't know. Eat me alive. Gonna go. There goes my arm. Eating me alive. Now I'm wondering if, like, there's a CD in that new box set that's called Van Morrison Eating Alive at the Roxy. There's not. There's not. I, well, if there is, I don't have it here. Okay, could you get it? You brushed it off at Thanksgiving, but I, I really do love those impressions you do. Ugh. No, seriously. You're like, I don't know, a, a rich little for the cell phone generation. A rich a rich little for the cell phone. Okay. I don't I, I don't know if that's a compliment, but... Anyway, a slice of it's a compliment. <laughs> okay. Would you please do one for me, please? I don't know. What, what 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 do you want to hear, Chip? Oh, I don't know. How about let me think here. <clears throat> what about What about Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong and Joe Namath arguing about I don't know, like what what's the best prog album of all time? Joe Na Tommy Chong. Yes. From Cheech and Chong and yeah. Joe Namath arguing about the best prog album of all time. 
Yes. <clears throat> All right, I'll do this for you, Chip. Well, I'd I'd say that the uh, the 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 most legendary prog album of all time would have to be Close to the Edge by Yes, which I feel has some of the strongest uh, progressive uh, melodies that I've ever heard in a uh, an album. Hey man, I, I gotta say you're wrong. It's Tarkus, man. Tark <laughs> Tarkus is my favorite, man. It's got a Armadillo with guns coming off of him, man. I find Emerson, Lake, and Palmer to be quite uh, indulgent in spots. And Yes is much more compositional, which I'm, I'm more of a fan of. Well, I don't know, man. When Keith Emerson starts playing on Lucky Man, I don't know. And that's not even on Tarkus, man. <laughs> well, Tommy, what do you think of King Crimson? Look, man, I was a big fan of uh, Court of the Crimson King, but they kind of lost me in, in the wake of Poseidon. Uh, well, you should check out Lark's Tongues in Aspic, which uh, has some of their most majestic uh, work as well. Uh, the, the playing of Robert Fripp combined with uh, Bill Bruford's drumming is uh, exemplary. Uh, hey, man. You ever uh, listen to Tall Man? <laughs> I can't do any more. Does that make you happy now? Put Mike on. Mike's Mike. What do you want to say to Mike? I'll relay it. What kind of sorcery are you performing over there? Stop with that. They're right there. With, you summoned them. I didn't summon them. Oh my God. Um, I didn't know whether to laugh because it was hilarious or be terrified out of my, my BBDs. I still wear BBDs. Underrated <laughs> band. I didn't, I didn't need to know that, but... Okay, but getting back to these impressions? Yeah, yeah. Would you please do one for me, please? I don't know. Please, they're what? so good. It's yeah. all anyone wants to hear. What? Oh, what's well, all anyone wants That's the wants word to... on the street. Okay, well, look, what, what, what would you want to hear? Oh, let me think. Um... What about, what if you are Buck Owens' ghost? Remember Buck Owens? Sure. Yeah, he's a, a country music legend. Can we do like a little, like a little interview where I'll, I'll ask you some questions and you can just, you can answer? As Buck Owens' ghost? Yes. Now, like it's now though, he's back. Yeah, but I mean, he, he still probably have retained a little bit of that, 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 uh, that, twang that drawl sure i'm sure well i'm sure he would yeah he would he's, okay he's, he's, so buck owens ghost um what did it feel like when when you heard that the beatles were covering your songs here's the biggest act in the world right now and they're actually calling ahead to get to get acetates of your records before they even c came out Do, now, do you think Bucko help me to see it? Would, it? would he have like a ghostly quality as well as a twang? Yeah, there should be some kind of like echo if, if you sure. can do that. I don't know if I can do like, well, like, oh, yeah, shoot. it's kind of spooky too. Yeah, well, shoot, I, I was on, I was honored to hear that the uh, that the the them boys from uh, Liverpool were looking to do uh, some of my music. I didn't think it would go all the way over there to uh, to the United Kingdom. And it opened a lot of doors for me. And I started now, playing like Europe and Japan. I like that. That's really good. Now, Buck Owens Ghost. Yeah. You were the architect of the Bakersfield sound. How, how was that different than like, I don't know, the, the Nashville scene? Well, we were we were doing more of a, a, a thing where it was a little more a uh, little more basic and not as uh, not as produced as a lot of the Nashville records were. Oh, oh my God! Ooh. Buck Owens Ghost, you were on the TV show Hee Haw. That's right. It only ran for about three years, but it ended up being the longest running syndicated show in TV history for many years. 
What was it like being on that show? Was it fun? Was it fun being on Hee Haw? Yeah, it was a good time. Well, it ran for more than three years, son. You're wrong. You're wrong on that. Oh, I thought it was just three years. Well, son, it started in '69. I was hosting it with Roy Clark, and I was I was a host all the way till '86. Who who the hell's interviewing me right now? Oh, well, you I'm don't know a that. damn thing about me, Oof, son. Um, sorry about that. Uh, oh. Buck Owens' ghost. Yeah. You're from the, the town of Bakersfield, as, as is another artist. What do you think of the band Corn? Well, I, I got to say, I, I was a bit shocked to come back to Bakersfield, even as in my, my ghostly form. When I, I came back to Bakersfield and I was used to me being the, the top dog when it came to music here, and then... I come back and I see that this band Corn, which is also some some kids who were from uh, from these parts, were uh, somehow selling millions of albums. And uh, sure, there's uh, and the names like my name's B Buck, which is not my my given name. <coughs> but this band had Monkey and Head and. A fella named Fieldy, along with a guy named Jonathan singing lead and a drummer named David. And uh, to hear that music, it sounded like, I didn't know it was music at first. When I heard, I, when I heard it, I was like, surely there must be new instruments that have been invented since my passing. And then I saw them playing normal looking guitars although they were way too green and shiny and i just don't know how a a, a a bass guitar could have that it seems like they did they just barely put the strings on that thing and it just was laying across the pickups and then that singer was just singing about like Porno. Wow. What impression are you looking? Did you want? Well, look. What's up? And I love when you do those impressions. We just, we just love it. Okay. And to us, you're like the rich little of the Palm Pilot generation. Wait, say that again. You're like the rich little of the Palm Pilot generation. The to rich us. little of the Palm. Okay, I didn't yes, know I yes. was a part of the Palm Pilot generation. Absolutely, but, yes. So, look, I've heard you do both of these separately, but I'd love to hear you do Tommy Chong and Joe Walsh debating who was a better band, the Dirt Bombs or the Gories. Joe Walsh and Tommy Chong. Yes arguing about whether the dirt bombs or the gories were better yes huh how would it go wow hmm. hey how you doing i'm doing pretty good man so uh i was just listening to ultra gliding black man that's a good album yeah i like the gory i know you be house rocking they recorded it in a tin shed yeah man but the go the dirt bombs got two drummers man ultra gliding black covers and then they did their album after <laughs> that man which had uh original songs on it man and the bubble gum, too. Two drummers, man. Not easy to do. I love it. I can't get enough. Oh. I'm sorry. No, I'm I just think it's the best. I apologize. That no, was, it's great. It's I'll, great. I'll, I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you I liked it. I love it. Rick. Okay. Can I join in on the fun, please? Can you join in on what fun? I want to I wanna do imitation stuff with you. Okay. Yeah. Please. Let's hear it. All right. How about, um, what about we pick... Our favorite um, SCTV sketches. 
All right, and you, you be Joe Names because that's my favorite, and I'll be um. Think here, um. You know, I do a pretty good quiet Phil Anselmo. Phil Anselmo from Pantera. Yes, yeah, and Down. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We wouldn't yeah. want to miss Down, also. Yeah. All right. So, what are we gonna do here then? We're gonna do. I'll be Joe Namath and you be Phil Anselmo from Pantera. Yeah. And what are we doing? Debating our favorite SETV bits? Yeah, I'll start, okay? Okay. Hey, Joe, I don't know what you're into uh, when it comes to SCTV. You might, you, might, you might have to pod me up a little bit because I told you it is quiet. I potted you up. I already potted Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure what your favorite SCTV sketch is, but I know that mine's half wits. <laughs> He's got Martin Short doing that great stuff. He's got that real crunch going on. What do you? What's your favorite? Well, uh, Phil, I just want to tell you that look, I'm a huge fan of uh, Martin Short on Half Wits as well. I enjoy uh, Lawrence Orbach is the character you're referencing, and uh, but I'm always a fan more of uh, everything from uh, when you think of uh, William B. Williams and the Bobby Bittman. Uh, uh, when they were on the uh, Sammy Maudlin show, especially when William uh, left the show because the demographics were not, uh, uh, they, they were saying that the audience didn't want to see William on the show anymore. So he went and did his own show. And I remember one joke on that was uh, he, he told a monologue joke that bombed and someone in the audience yelled, what about Libya? Do you think that's funny? That's classic. That's classic humor. I love that one where uh, the same episode where uh, Marty Short comes out. I can't remember remember the character's name, but uh, he's the old uh, like Irving Cohen or something, and he sings that song, and he goes, "Oh William B, Oh William B, the fellow sitting right next to me," and all da da da. That's a bouncy C or something. I love that stuff. And then he said, uh, "Roy." What the hell kind of name is Roy? We could do this all night, oh, right? All night. That could go all night. I love it. I oh, love it. That is so. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Rudy, toot toot and toot your flute while you listen to Todd and the Great Show. What do you think? <laughs>